Good morning, Dad. It's Travis again, coming to you live from Delray Beach, soon to be Virginia Beach. Look forward to seeing you. This is installment three in our running series. And this is really discussing follow through. And what follow through means is it's, it's where your uh, other leg ends up and, is, and how it's moving through when, when this foot is on the ground. You know, obviously it's gonna be uh, right leg and left foot's on the ground and left leg and right foot's on the ground. So with that being said, um, follow through is a big factor because it, it's, it's gonna determine how much energy you have left in your hamstrings and glutes, these muscles, which are the ones that we really run from when our, when our form is right. So that being said, um, you know, up, up here, a lot of people like to follow way through thinking that it's adding something to their strike, thinking it's, at, it's, it's bringing their knee up, but what it's actually doing, is putting tons of strain on your hamstring. I got about one third of my body weight right now. Um, you know, it's about 60 pounds right here on my hamstring. And it's way too much for this to take on every step because my leg is curled up so much. And also, you know, as you can see, I'm tottering on this leg because it's difficult to balance. When you follow through a lot, it brings your whole body forward. It puts more strain on your quad and your forefoot and it, and it enables less of a roll, less of an energy transfer into your next step. So here is too much. And the other problem some people have when they get tired is they actually follow through too little. So right here. And they're almost dragging their foot on the ground for the next step. So they're not getting that full hamstring and glute extension that's going to cause a powerful transfer of energy forward through the run and also a, an, an efficient um, energy conserving transfer of power forward through the run. So really with follow through we want to be right here at about a 90 degree angle. That way our hamstrings are not taking on too much weight, our leg is swinging freely, and, it's in, and the 90 degree angle is going to place our knee and our hip in the right place and angle for the next stride, put it right under our body with some force onto the ground, but not too much, and we're able to have a nice easy roll off from our midfoot and heel to the forefoot and keep going, and not wasting any energy. So I'll, I'll run first with, a, uh, with an over follow through and then an under really quickly and then I'll do a regular. So this is an over follow through. It makes people feel fast and actually hurts you. The steps are choppy and awkward. I can feel the strain on my hamstrings and my balance is really hindered. It's really hard to go with each step. And then this is an under follow through. It's going to be like a shuffle really. not gaining the stride length I want and what it causes you to do is land right here on your main forefoot so you're not getting any power transfer coming off. You're just kind of marching on the ground really. And then I'm going to do a correct follow through now which is the most energy efficient and power causing stride. And this is right. See my shin perpendicular from the ground. A nice smooth roll off of each stride. So that concludes the video on fall through. It's going to be a really subtle but really important energy saving, power transferring part of good running form.